Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday prayer meeting. Before we start, may I request everyone to please stand. As we begin with a word of prayer. Okay, let's pray. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day that you have given to us. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to gather here in your house of worship for this midweek prayer meeting. And Lord, uh, we thank you, Lord, for everyone that is here tonight, and also for those who are watching online. And, uh, and Lord, sa mga papunta pa lang, Lord, dito, Lord, uh, please watch over them, protect them, O God. And Lord, as we have this Wednesday prayer meeting, please bless the preacher as he delivers the truths from your word. And Lord, please help edify uh, one another as we uh, pray and also as we listen to, your, to the message today. This I pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. For our first song, let us sing, Constantly Abiding. We will be singing verses 1 and verse 2. On the first verse, ready, sing. There's a peace in my heart that the world never gave. A peace it cannot take away. Though the trials of life may surround like a cloud I've a peace that has come there to stay constantly abiding Jesus is mine constantly abiding divine He never leaves me lonely I will never leave thee Jesus is mine All the world sing to sing of a Savior and King When peace sweetly came to my heart Troubles all fled away And my night turned to day Blessed Jesus, how glorious Thou art Constantly abiding, Jesus is mine. Constantly abiding, rapture divine. He never leaves me lonely, whisper so so is mine. You may be seated. Uh, good evening to everyone and welcome to our prayer meeting and let's take this time tonight to uh, to take this uh, let's take this time tonight to, to hear some prayer requests, blessings, and also uh, with the sing opportunity. Sino po yung may mga ano po ngayon? Uh, ay may mga witnessing opportunity. Okay. Okay. Uh, good evening, church. Papasalamat po sa Panginoon kasi binigyan niya po ako ng strength. And kanina po, kakagaling ko lang po sa laban namin for for NCR meeting kasi po uh, if hindi po kami manalo, hindi po kami papasok ng 
NCR meeting. And papasalamat po ako sa Panginoon kasi kanina, tatakot ako kasi yung kalaban ko sobrang laki. And di ko talaga inakala na mananalo ako. And papasalamat ako sa Panginoon kasi binigyan niya po ako ng, ng lakas to achieve the gold medal. And, and yun lang po. And yung sports ko po is Arnis po. Ah, okay. Thank you lang po. Okay, sino pa po? That's a blessing. Okay. Sino pa po? Uh, I, when was that? Uh, mayroon pong, ano, mayroon pong itinawag po sa amin uh, na magkakaroon po ng, kakandak po ng funeral service because one of our members died. Si uh, attendees or slash member po, uh, uh, Si Sister Maura Salvacion, uh, nasa prayer list natin, she went home to be with the Lord. Uh, uh, kami po ay, uh, kami po ng mga uh, uh, staff ay nakasama po doon and we were able to uh, witness, uh, to share the gospel po doon before, just before the cremation service. Uh, and after that also, last Sunday, nagkaroon po kami ng Nagkaroon ulit po kami ng uh, memorial service po, bago sa committal service po doon sa bahay po ni na Sister Racoma. So, another time po na ma mabigyan po ng opportunity makapag-share ng gospel. So, uh, yan po ang mga nagaganap po dito and uh, the staff are very much involved sa para po mag, uh, sa mga ganito pong pagkakataon in their happy times and even in their sad times. This was the second funeral in just a month ata yun. Kaya, please pray for each other. And uh, kung may tatawagin pa po kami dito ng mga makakasama sa mga ganong uh, services, uh, please be ab available to do so. Sino pa po? Uh, okay, ngayon, uh, dadako na po tayo ngayon sa mga Prayer request. Sino pa po dito ang may mga prayer request before we read the ones that we have here? Okay, si Brother Rafi. Hello, um, good evening, Church. Uh, so, prayer request ko lang. So, I've been discipling uh, one of our young people um, since um, last year, late last year. Um, his name is um, Patrick Freyas. And kanina lang, um, katatapos lang namin yung um, lesson namin with regards baptism. So, matagal ko na rin naman na siyang um, inuulit-ulit with regards salvation and with regards um, assurance of his salvation. So, prayer request ko lang is sana, um, kasi gusto niya na daw magbabaptize, pero kailangan niya muna daw magpaalam sa parents niya. So, ayun, prayer request, sana makapagpaalam po siya. And then, hopefully, makapagbaptize na siya. And then, makapag, yun nga, uh, as an act of, act of, um, Submission to the will of God, diba? And, and makapag-ministry na siya dito sa church. Yun lang po. Thank you. Okay. That's good. Mga bata pa lang. Ah, sige. Sino pa po? Okay, don't forget to pray for Sister Rose. Uh, uh, Sister Rose Anyala po, she, she will be, she's scheduled po, po para sa uh, biopsy uh, this coming Friday. So, ipag-pray po natin na magkaroon po ng maganda pong result uh, dito po sa kanyang uh, biopsy po. Nasa listahan po ng ating prayer list sa uh, number 14. So, please pray for her. Uh, sino pa po ang dandi dito na nandito sa ating listahan? Uh, okay. Let's go, to the, uh, let's go to our prayer list. Ito po sa... Continue to pray po sa mga nandi dito sa ating prayer list. Alam niyo na po yung mga... Uh, nandito but uh, it's worth um, uh, repeating po yung iba na hindi po natin gaano na, na, uh, na babanggit at ang mga iba nito ay mga ongoing medical procedure. Si Sister Javelin Tatel at uh, si Jenny Senyo. We try to go to the hospital kasama po namin ang mga, ang mga staff po but uh, hindi po pala pwedeng bisitahin sa hospital. Uh, and we were sad na hindi po namin mabisita. And uh, she, she has a stage 4 cancer po. Ito si Jenny Senyo. So, uh, bawal po magbisita po. And uh, 
Uh, hindi po namin nag nagkaroon kami ng pagkakataon makasyo ng gospel. Uh, please pray na si Sister Alice ay gamitin ng Panginoon na uh, makapunta doon at ma-share po yung gospel. So, tulong, ituloy po natin. Ito po si Sister Doktora uh, Palitang. Uh, I think mayroon po siyang ano, may, nasa, uh, nasa hospital po siya and uh, sa at may gagawin po para sa kanyang puso. So, mayroon po siyang heart problem. Please continue to pray for her. Okay. Send then po uh, si Baby Asi. Um, uh, please pray for her. Mayroon po siyang burial infection. Kahit po siya ay umu umuubo at siya po ay uh, uh, mayroon, pong, ano, mayroon po siyang ibang sakit po, uh, patakbo-takbo pa rin siya. But continue to uh, pray for her. So, Yan po ang mga nasa prayer list natin aside po sa mga magte-take po ng mga exam. Uh, let's uh, find our prayer partner po and let's go to the Lord in prayer.
Shall we join together in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this time that you have gathered us together for prayer. Lord, uh, even as we approach your holy throne, we realize, Lord, that we, you are a God who is holy, righteous, and so lifted up. And, oh, Lord, we are unworthy vessels that we come to approach you, and thank you for giving us the opportunity to even to worship you. Uh, Lord, forgive us of every sin that we have in, our, in us, oh God, that is not in conformity with your holy character. Lord, uh, we pray, God, for our church. We pray, God, for your protection, even as we look for a new pastor. Oh God, may your will be done. And, oh God, I pray also, Lord, for our, uh, for our members, oh Lord, that they would learn to grow in grace and in the knowledge of you, Lord. I pray, God, for stability in our church. And, oh God, we pray also for, uh, for your power, oh God. Lord, we ask you, God, that even as we uh, have this anniversary, oh God, I pray, Lord, that in all of this you would be lifted up. And I pray, oh God, that you would give safe travels to uh, missionary uh, Ariel Castro and his family even as he comes over to our country, Lord. Lord, we remember those who are in our list who are dealing with illnesses, many of them dealing with cancer. Uh, some of them are our friends. Some of them, Lord, are unsaved. I pray God for Ines Castellano, Hias Morales, uh, Catherine Villena, Brother Nolly Makatangay, Sister Sonia Bascheto, Sister Irene Marcelo, Sister Rina Plantelia, Sarina Villesa, uh, Joe Villesa, and Roma Falguera, and uh, Sister Eliana Gestusani, and Roland for Nea, for Sister Janet Medidas, uh, Carol Luanco, uh, Cor Esquilo, uh, Susan Mapuyan, and Jevelyn Tatel, and Jenny Senyo. Uh, some of them have ongoing chemotherapy, and some of them, Lord, are not yet saved. And to oh God, that you would touch them, O oh God, with your healing hand. And O oh God, um, may you give some of them, O oh God, opportunity to hear the gospel. We pray, oh God, also for those dealing with other illness, Tony Chuan. Uh, Jose Tamunda, Luz Juan Bernardo, Hilmar Cabico, uh, Jose Sumistrado, Grace Tanya Pobustan, uh, Sister Ramona Malapajo, Eno Cronces Valles, Brother Willie, uh, Garcia, Pinky Farolan, and Sofia Jimenez, Pastor Roland Blasa, Sister Sierra Lontoc, and uh, Sister Christine Supremo, and Sister Rosa Nyala, even as she would be having her biopsy um, this coming um, Friday, I pray, God, for a favorable result. I pray, God, for uh, baby Asi, oh God, that you would cure her of, cure him, oh God, of his viral infection. Lord, we pray for our brethren who are in the uh, conflict ridden areas, Afghanistan, Ukraine, and Myanmar. I pray, God, that you would protect them and uh, watch over them and supply, oh God, uh, their needs. We pray, God, also for Sister Rose Ann Rapacon, even as she would, be have, she would deliver their baby. I pray, God, that uh, you would watch over her. Thank you, God, for the safe delivery of Sister, of the baby of Sister Janeline Mwamba. I pray, God, that you would uh, continue to make, uh, keep the baby healthy and also the, also the recovery of Sister Janeline Mwamba. I pray, God, for Ashley Galano and Claire Pasqua, Angeline Paulet, uh, Jamaica Palo, Naomi Grace Valencia, Geraldine Villasin as they take their CPA board exam this coming May. For Mark Amaxin, um, as they, he takes the, as, as they take over the licensure exam, for Mark Ben Untalan, uh, Maria El Elaine Antonio Russell Ga uh, Ganellas as they take the civil engineering board exam. Harry Antonio, as he takes the um, engineering board exam. And Edward De Benya, as he takes the LET exam, this, the LET this coming uh, March 13. Lord, we pray for Alegria Fundamental Baptist Church, financial provision for the church building construction. I know God, we pray, God, that um, you would bless uh, our church, even as the message is going to be preached tonight. I pray, God, and thank you for the members, uh, for new visitors that are being won to you. I pray, God, that they will continue to grow in grace and in the knowledge of you. 
Uh, God, this we ask and pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, tonight, uh, we would like to take this opportunity to recognize kung mayroon po tayong first-time visitor. So, if this is your first time to visit uh, Baptist Bible Church, pakitaas lamang po ng iyong kamay. Uh, we have, I think, uh, Exile. Okay, Exile. We have Brother Exile there. Okay, pakibigyan na lang po ng um, uh, visitor's uh, uh, package. And then, sino pa po? Okay, so uh, may we call on our song leader to please come and welcome our visitor uh, tonight. Let us all stand and let's sing the welcome song. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here, hallelujah. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here, hallelujah. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here. Please remain standing as we sing our second song, When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. We're going to sing the first two verses. On the first verse, ready, sing. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the save of earth shall gather over on the other shore When the roll is called up yonder I'll be there When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder Second verse On that bright and cloudless morning When the dead in Christ shall rise And the glory of His resurrection share When His chosen ones shall gather To their home beyond the skies And the roll is called up yonder I'll be there It's called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. You may be seated. speaker for tonight is, an, uh, is one of our own and let's pray especially for for him soon he will be uh, training for the for for, for the each Asian uh, Baptist, Baptist clearing house uh, training for missionaries so and um, I uh, let's pray that God would use him mightily even in the training and soon deputation and Ipanalangin po natin na gamitin talaga ng Panginoon ang mga churches po na pupuntahan niya para siya po ay pa makapag-preach. Uh, so, let's uh, welcome once again one of our own uh, uh, ABBC student, soon to graduate, Brother Anthony Mensa. Thank you, Sir Dennis, um, for warm introduction and also for the church uh, to allow me to preach. Uh, it's a great honor to uh, also participate in the things of the church. And I believe um, it is not in vain. Uh, and the members, we can also do more. Uh, we can involve ourselves uh, to 
do more for the Christ. How shall we all stand up as we open our Bibles uh, without wasting much time? Uh, let us open our Bibles to the book of John, uh, John chapter 7, and we'll be reading from verse 14 to 18. John chapter 7, verse 14 to 18. And I read from verse 14. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man lettuce, having never learned? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but he is that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it is of God or whether it, I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seek his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no righteousness is in him. Shall we pray, Paul? Our God, Heavenly Father, we do thank you. We magnify your name. We lifted your name high as people that we don't deserve to be saved. But through your grace, you send your son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for us. We appreciate you. And we pray that you continue to strengthen us, multiply us, and let us grow from faith to faith. Let us understand your word. And help me as the one who is going to preach. Uh, let your Holy Spirit guide me and also put words in my mouth so that I'll be able to uh, serve your people who are here. With all these things, I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, you may now take your seat. <clears throat> uh, the book of John is one of the books uh, I, I like uh, from the gospel to the epistles, uh, first John, second, and third, uh, is one of the books that helps us. And uh, we will see uh, that in the book of John, I mean the gospel, from verse 6, Jesus Christ uh, made the, the Pharisees or the Jews I know that he, was, he is the bread of life. And because of that statement, uh, the Jewish plot or they plan to kill Jesus. Uh, but one thing that we need to know is uh, that nobody can kill Jesus Christ uh, because he, made, he said it that he is the one who will lay uh, down himself and the three days time he will be able uh, to resurrect or to build it again. So there's no one who has the power uh, to kill Jesus Christ. But in the mindset of the Jewish people, they were plotting because Jesus Christ has mentioned something that they think uh, it is a blasphemy, according to them. And they believe that no human being is supposed to make a such, a, such a statement. Uh, so when after verse 6 to verse 7, we will see that Jesus Christ was in the hot cake, I mean, something like that. They were looking for him to be killed, or they were looking for him to, be, to arrest him. Uh, so in verse 7, when we look at verse 1, we will see that even his own brothers uh, were telling Jesus Christ uh, to go to a certain place where they were having a feast. And uh, we all bear witness in the book of Leviticus, I think chapter 23, how the, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, how God uh, mentioned about the feast uh, that they need to celebrate. And uh, we will see that we have three main feasts, uh, feast that if you were Jew, uh, in annually or in a year, you need to go back to Israel uh, in order to celebrate uh, such feast. And one of them is Passover. One of them is also uh, the Sabbath or the Feast of the Week. And this one, uh, if we read from verse 1 uh, and 2, 3, we will see that there was a feast uh, that they were celebrating. And because of this feast, this feast is the Feast of Booth, or the Feast of Sukkot. Uh, they, were, they celebrated this feast um, to remember their journey from 
the place, their journey from the, the nation of Israel, uh, the nation of Egypt uh, to the place of uh, the promised land or the place of Israel. So this feast was just a commemoration. They commemorate this feast in order for their freedom that they had from the people of Egypt. And by God giving them such a thing, it is honor. They used to honor God. And they, they celebrate this feast by joy and also by God provision to them from the uh, wilderness and also the shelter, how God guide them and also to show their trustworthy on how they magnify God or on how they, they, they trust God. So you can also call these feasts as the tabernacle, I mean the feast of tabernacle. They celebrate this one uh, in seven days uh, for the honoring of 40 years of uh, walking from the wilderness to the place of Israel. So they do this thing by honoring God. And in verse 7, we will see that at that time, there were, this feast was able to come on. I mean, at the time that in verse 7, we will see the communication between uh, Jesus Christ and his brothers by the way of his brother telling Jesus Christ to go to the feast, uh, which is being held in Jerusalem, because at that time they were in in the place of Galilee. So the brothers were telling Jesus Christ uh, to go to the place because if he's doing so many things, then he don't need to keep it there. He need to go to the people and let the people also see uh, the wonders that he's doing. So the brothers were advising him. But when we look in verse 5, uh, verse 5 tells us that the brothers were not even believing Jesus Christ. So they were giving him advice to go, but in their own mind, they are unbelievers. They don't believe that their brothers, uh, the, the brother can do such a thing. And we know the brothers of Jesus Christ, the JJJs, so the James and, and, and other brothers. So in verse 5, we see he said, For neither did his brother believe him, believe in him, for neither his brothers believe in him. So they were giving him an advice, or by the way of telling him to do something, but on their own, they don't believe in him. So in verse six, uh, 7, we can divide into maybe two or three parts. Uh, from verse 1 uh, to 13, we can see the unbelief or disbelief of his brothers, or we can see that from their coming, there is disbelief. And also, from 13 to, I think, 33, we can also see the division uh, between the people when Jesus Christ was talking to them. And the last verse, we can also see the debate uh, between them and Jesus Christ. So in this chapter, there, were, there was a lot of things going on. And because of that, it encourages me uh, to learn something about it. If we want to do the will of God in this church and in this year, if we want to do, do the will of God, then God has something to tell us. So the title of my message is Christ the Truth and the Righteous One. Christ the Truth and the Righteous One. And my big idea is because Christ is the Truth and Righteous One, our preaching and exhortation must glorify only Him. And the thing that we will see here will encourage us. So in verse 14, if I read again, it says, Now about the midst or the middle of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And, you know, when the, the, the brothers were telling Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ told them that it is not yet time. I mean, God did everything or God done things in the perfect time. Jesus knew the time that he needs to go to the temple. And he, need, he also knew the time that he doesn't need to go to the temple. So nobody can force Jesus Christ at his own will and time he will be able to go or he will be able to do what pleases him. So in verse 14, we will see that he went there to teach, even though the people were looking at, after him to be killed or they were looking after him to arrest him. And in verse 15, he said, and the, Jew, and the Jews marveled, saying, how knoweth this man let, let us? having never 
learned. So the Jews were surprised because of the teachings that Jesus Christ were teaching them. And we will know from the book of Luke that the first time Jesus Christ went to the temple, he didn't taught or he didn't teach. He went there to ask questions, and the people were also marvel. I mean, how come this small boy asked such a question? And Jesus Christ was gathering and elderly people, those who are rabbis, in order to ask them questions. So in the second time, he went there to purposely uh, to teach uh, because of how the Pharisees or the Jews, they perceive Jesus Christ. So in verse 15, he said, Then the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man's letter, having never learned? So they were perplexed, they were confused about how Jesus Christ was teaching them. And the teaching of Jesus Christ uh, proved to them that that uh, made them to know that what they are teaching, comparing to what Jesus Christ was also teaching, is totally opposite. There is contrast or there is difference between what Jesus Christ was teaching and between what, what they were also teaching. So there was confused between them and surprise, and that is how human beings we are. Whenever we hear a good preaching or whenever we hear somebody who is preaching the truth, whereby we are listening to maybe different uh, teachings, whereby we are listening to other teachings which never give us the true God, we become perplexed, we become confused. I remember when I was first converted, the moment I hear the word of God at the first time in Baptist Bible Church, I become confused. And so many questions came into my mind. I mean, I have heard so many things. And when I'm comparing that, those things that I have heard to that of what my pastor was teaching me was totally opposite, so I was very confused. And I can say that was same, uh, the same thing what was happening to the people of Jewish, uh, the Jewish people. And uh, by the way of that, Jesus Christ mentioned about his father. When we go to verse 16, he mentioned about his father, making them to know that his teachings was not something that he was able to learn on this earth. His teachings are strictly a divine teaching. His teachings are different from what they think that he's supposed to do because you cannot tell somebody who created the world to go to school. He knows everything. He created you. He knows your mindset. So how come, I mean, they want Jesus Christ? Because they don't believe in him. So Jesus Christ made them to know that my teaching it's not of human, like how you people teach. I mean, in the Jewish people, when they are teaching, they quote other rabbis. They quote their people. In the, in the Jewish book, we have uh, a certain book that we call uh, Tanakh. And this Tanakh, they have three books inside. I mean, three books compiled. That is where we get the Torah. The Torah is inside the Tanakh. And we get another book, uh, which is the prophetic book. So it is three, and another book, which is Psalms, and also the wisdom books. So in these three books, uh, they come, they, they, before you will be able to know these books, you need to go to school and school and school and school before you can teach, before you can become a rabbi, before you can stand in front of people to preach or to teach them. And one thing that we will see here also is they, never, they are not only teaching them how to, uh, how to teach, but they also teach them how to create and able to draw people to themselves. So when they had the teaching of Jesus Christ, by the way of teaching and drawing people to themselves, they were marveled. How come this, this man doesn't go to school? He didn't... Pro, uh, uh, pass the, the, the right procedure that we were able to do it to get knowledge. But he have all this knowledge. I mean, he is even doing more than us. So how come? And they were prepared. And we will see also uh, in the book of Acts, uh, Acts, chapter, uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 13, when Peter and uh, Peter, they were, uh, the Bible made us to know when they were boldly enough to uh, proclaim the word of God, the people were 
also marveled, and they asked themselves the same question. But there, the Bible made us to know that they remember and said, these are the, the, the disciples or the, the people of Christ. So being a church member or being uh, a, a believer, it's, it doesn't necessarily need to, maybe we need to go to Bible school before we can preach. I mean, the Holy Spirit made us to know that he's the best teacher and he, he will guide us in everything so that we'll be able to comprehend the Bible. But it is also an opportunity for us to also prepare ourselves from the calling or even from, from the work that God wants to give it to us in order for us to go to Bible college. But if we are not going to Bible college, then it depends on how we will be able to comprehend or how we will be able to understand a good teaching. So if we cannot understand a good teaching, it will be very difficult for us to also preach or to even share the word of God to other people. So the first point of my message is the content of Christ's teaching. So in verse, verse 14, now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught, and the Jew marveled, saying, How know where this man let us, having never learned? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. That is the content of the teaching of Jesus Christ. His teaching wasn't depend on somebody. It wasn't quoting from somebody. It was straight away from the Father. And we will see that that is the divine teaching that Jesus Christ taught. So in the section of the Gospel of John, Jesus was able to refer to himself as being the one who was sent from God. He often referred to himself as sent one. So what was he saying? All this was done because his teaching of the word of God was amazed or was able to confuse the people because his teaching they did not perceive, they did not understand it because he didn't learn it from anybody. So the content of the Christ teaching was based or focused on the Father, the one who sent him. How much more you and I, I mean as believers, how do we preach our preaching, the content of our preaching, does it focus on God or it depends on other people? I mean, most of the time we will see people quoting, quoting, quoting. Yeah, it is good to quote. But if we reject or if we lose focus on the content of the preach of the Bible of, or of our word, it will benefit nobody. Nobody will be benefit from the teaching that focus on any, something else. So the content of his teaching was, is his teaching was centered on God. The Jewish teachers of the day were, were known to be teaching by quoting other rabbis. But Jesus wasn't quoting other rabbis. He simply referred to the Father as he taught. So his teaching was only strictly centered on God. Nothing more else, I mean nothing else, nothing more. It is only God. That is what we need to do. And we can see that from the lives of, of the apostles. Apostles didn't go to school, but God, Jesus Christ, was able to use them to teach them or to, was able to use them to turn the world upside down, according to Acts. So the teachings of God was divine, and the, the disciples were able to learn from Christ. We will know that Apostle Paul was even taught by a rabbi, whose name is uh, Gamelia. I mean, something like Gamelia or Gamelia. Apostle Paul was learned from him. And also, even Jesus Christ himself, he taught the disciples. But him, Jesus Christ, because of his divinity and because of uh, what he came to this earth to do, he doesn't know to learn from anybody. And his teaching was pure. And we will see that from Apostle Paul, I mean, Apostle Paul was also learned from the, this thing. But upon all his learning, upon everything, Apostle Paul count it nothing. Even all the things that he learned from the, the rabbi, he didn't count it, as, he counted it as nothing when he got an encounter with the true word that saves him. So there is only one word that can save us. And if as a church we lose focus 
On that thing, we are losing focus on how people will get saved. People can only get saved when we preach Christ to them. And there is nothing more, nothing, le uh, uh, nothing less. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 8, Apostle Paul made us to know that, Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ. So, everything that happens to put upon his school, upon everything that he was learned by the rabbis, he counted it as rubbish. He counted it as nothing. Immediately he had an encounter with God. And Jesus Christ used people or used uh, his message to send Apostle Paul. And when we, we look at the, the, the disciples of all the apostles, we know that he, he was the, the most, uh, the popular one or the most uh, no, no, known one, the most known apostle. He was able to establish a lot of churches by the way of taking the gospel of God to many places. So Apostle Paul counted nothing. So we shouldn't lose focus on God. Jesus taught them as one who have authority because he doesn't need to learn from anybody. And we can look, we can see that from Matthew chapter 7, verse 28 to 29. He said, and so it was when Jesus had ended this saying that the people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as scribes. So the scribes, they teach without an authority. They teach by the way of gaining something from the people. They teach by the way of telling the people what they want them to hear. But as church and as people of God, we don't teach people as how they want, I mean, to hear. We teach them or we preach to them in order to focus on God, not to focus on us, in order not to extract something from you, but to only keep your focus and your faith in God. That is what our Lord Jesus Christ did. So he preached in authority in order not to be like the scribes. And God will never be like scribes or our Lord Jesus Christ will never be like scribes because his teaching was pure and his preaching was in a, and his preaching comes with power. In John chapter 8 verse 29, it says, And he that sent me is with me. For the Father hasn't not let me alone, for I do always those things that pleases him. So his, the focus of his preaching was on, on the Father. That is why he didn't make known to the people that I am the one, I am the one that people always use. That if Jesus Christ was God, why didn't he preach that he is God? He was sent to come and do a purpose. And he didn't come to, I mean, take the glory to himself, he came, by the way, to do what exactly the Father sent him to do. And that serves an example for you and I. We are not Jesus, we are not Christ, we are not rabbis, we are the servants of God. And we need to serve God as what he wants us to say, as what he wants us to do. We don't need to depend on people, we don't need to focus on people, we don't need to listen to what people are telling us. But we need to focus on the word of God. We need to focus on the Bible. We need to keep our feet on the Bible in order to preach the truth. As we will divert our ways, as we will be looking elsewhere, that contradicts the word of God. God wants his servant to preach nothing but God himself. To preach nothing but he himself. That is what God wants us to do. The second point I want, you, I want us to see is the condition of Christ's teaching. The condition of Christ's teaching in verse 17 to 18. It says, If any man will do, we do, if any man will to do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. So in this context, Jesus Christ was even telling the people to weigh or to scale his preaching. Either it is of God or it is human, I mean, human perspective. Where my preaching, either it is of God or it is of human. 
In verse 8, he says, He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but his, he that speak, uh, seeketh his glory, that sent him the same is true, and no righteousness is in him. So the condition of Christ's teaching is one thing that he made us to know in verse 17 and 18. Jesus Christ required them to understand the three secrets of doing God's will. And the first one we will see here is the desire, uh, delight or desire to perceive godly teaching. That is one thing that will make us to do the will of God. We cannot perceive other teaching and do the will of God. We can only perceive the godly teaching in order for us to do the will of God. So he said, if any man, if is the condition that he is given to them. And by the way, let me ask you, do you will to do the will of God this year? Are you willing to do the will of God this year? Then Jesus Christ is telling them that perceive a godly teaching. Because that will be the light to direct you. That will be the light to go before you. Do not listen to what people will tell about you. Jesus Christ came. He taught the Father's teaching. He taught his divine teaching. But still he was killed. And we, the servants of God, we know from the Bible that there are so many things will happen to us. At the moment you take the direction of being follower of Christ, the whole world will turn upside, uh, the whole world will turn against you. There will be trials, there will be temptation. But are you going to allow yourself for such trials, temptations, for such persecution to change the way you preach the truth? No way. You don't need to allow yourself, and you don't need to give yourself time, uh, yourself uh, an opportunity for such a thing to happen to you. Then what we can do is to only be delight in perceive, perceiving godly teaching. I mean, so many things is going on today. I remember last time, last week, uh, there was a visitor here, and when I was talking to him, immediately I mentioned I'm from Ghana. He said, oh, Ghana and Nigeria, I know them that they are, there is uh, Pentecostal charismatic teachings. And I said, yeah, I'm very happy that you know that. And he said in his prayers, when he was looking for a church, he, I mean, went so many places, but the Baptist churches that he found, the preaching was different from where he's attending church now. I mean, anyone who wants the truth, who wants to do the will of God, will stamp his feet on the word of God. And he will ever listen to the truth. Not, I mean, the degree and the accomplishment of the person, not the level of the person, but the truth of the word of God. Jesus Christ told them to wear my teachings, and we can see them from the, the, the Berean people. When Apostle Paul teaches, they wear the, uh, the teachings of Apostle Paul with the Bible. So the Bible is our everything. It is our sword, it is our milk, it is our meat as followers of God. We cannot reject the Bible truth and focus on something else. So any person who really desires to do God's will will be given a great level of understanding by God and a great level of sensitivity to God's word. When a person is willing to submit to the will of God, he discovers that God is truth and is backed up by all the kinds of reliable evidence and facts. We cannot preach to other people and reject the Bible. The true preaching, the true teachings, will make us to also go out and preach the truth to people. So we don't need to reject it, but a person will not be able to look at those facts and hear that evidences if he is not willing to bend his will to the will of God. If we don't want to bend our will to the will of God, then let's take aside the Bible and let's use our own imaginations. Let's use our own mentality in the church and we will see the chaos that will come to the church. 
If the church turn away from the Bible, there will be a great chaos in the church because the word of God will be the only thing to lead the church. The next one that we will see is the demand to render our worship in his glory. God demanded us that everything that we will do in the church, we should render it in the glory of God. There's nothing that God wants us to do by the way of for us to glorify him. God created human beings by the way of us to glorify God. So Jesus Christ condemns the spirit of self-exhortation, which is at times is found in all of us. Most of us, we glorify ourselves. At the moment we have something, at the moment something comes into our hands, at the moment we, we climb to a certain position, at the moment we, we have some knowledge that we think that we are superior than other people, then we started to glorify ourselves. My pastor was always telling me that if you want to know the character, a true character of a person, give him money. But every poor, poor person will always beg and will always seek people uh, for money. But those who have money, it is very difficult to come down, to humble themselves. So our preaching and everything that we do in the church must glorify God. That is what God demands from us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 29, verse 31, it says, That no flesh shall glorify in his presence, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and redemption. In verse 31, it said, That according as it is written, he that glorified, let him glorify in the Lord. Everything that we have, if we are glorified, our glorification is supposed to be in the Lord. So here is the test by which we may discover whether the preacher has been called of God to ministry or whether he ran without being sent. We are people who are running without being sent, without God being called them. And when you go to my country, you will find a lot. I wish you will all have opportunity to go to Africa and see how people are deceiving people. I mean, I think even in YouTube and even on Facebook, you can, you can see some. They are not using the Bible. They are using their imaginations, twisting the Bible in order to get something from people. And if the church will go like that, we will deceive a lot of people. Let's see what John the Baptist said. John the Baptist said, when he was baptized, our Lord Jesus Christ said, he must increase, but I must decrease. According to John chapter 3, 30, he gave the glory to God. He gave the glory to Jesus Christ. Apostle Paul also wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9, that I am the least of the apostles, that I, might, I, that I am not me to call an apostle. Apostle Paul was lowering himself, was humbling himself by giving the glory to God. And in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 8, again he said, unto me who am, I, who am less than the least of all saints. Upon all what Apostle Paul did, he was not even receiving the glory. He see himself as nothing and he was giving the glory to God. Apostle Paul also wrote in 2 Corinthians verse 4, 5, We preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus our Lord. He always gives glory to God. It is not I, it is not you, it is Christ who came to save us. It is not our buildness, it is not how we talk, it is not how intelligent we are. It is Christ who came to save us. Everything that we need to do must be a glory to his name. Paul said it in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with God. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but who? Christ. The glory was given to Christ. In me, 
and life which I, I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loves me and gave himself for me. Apostle Paul said, I live not because of I. I live not because of who am I. I live because of Christ. I live because of him. In Philippians chapter 4, 13, he said, I can do all things, but through who? Through Christ, who strengthened me. It is not me, but Christ. All his preaching, all his churches that he established, his focus was on Christ. Let us open our Bible from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5 uh, to 8. <clears throat> verse 5, and I read. So who then is Paul? And who then is Apollos? But ministered by whom you believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave increase. So then neither is he that planted anything, neither is he watered, but who? But God that giveth the increase. So all the increase is, comes from God. All wisdom comes from God. All good things that we have comes from God. And the church we have is also the body of Christ. So our glory might not reside in us. We don't need to re rejoice in our own effort, but we need to rejoice because it all comes from God. I mean, the rich fool, the Bible made us to know us after he planted and the fruit came, he said, oh, my soul, rejoice because I have planted things and I don't even know where to put some. He didn't give the glory to God. And the Bible made us to know that the foolish you are foolish. And those who glory in themselves, as the Bible says, they are foolish because they don't give glory to God. The next one I want us to see is the devoted heart to believe that Christ is true and righteous. So these are the conditions that if this year we want to know the will of God, the first one is we need to perceive or we need to Listen to godly preaching or godly teaching. And we need to also give glory to God in all conditions. And also, the last and the most important one is to also believe that Christ is the truth and righteous. Because the Pharisees at that time, they believed that Christ wasn't the true, I mean the sent out one. He wasn't the truth. He wasn't the righteous. He's just a human being. I mean, what good things come from uh, the place of Nazareth? There's nothing good comes from there. As somebody who has been born by the father of carpenter and the mother who, whom nobody knows him, what good thing can come from this person? But let me tell you, God's way is always not straight. It is always crooked. It will lead you to the straight path. And Jesus Christ wants them to know that I am the sent out one. He wants them to establish authority to them that, hey, I'm not the, 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 the human that I need to go to school. Because if you listen to my preaching, you will listen to God. And I and God, there's no distinction between us. There's no distinction between us. God, I am the God coming in the flesh. So at the moment you listen to my father, you will listen to me. So the Lord Jesus Christ always claimed to be the sent out, sent one of the father. And then he says, if any man will do his will, if people are sincerely desirous to know and knowing the Lord's will, and will come to him seeking the light, they will find out that I am the Messiah. If you are willing to know the doctrines, to know my teachings, 
to glorify not yourself, but glorify God, then you will know that I am the sent out one. I am the one who was sent by the Father. I am the Messiah. I am the righteous one. I am the door. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life that you are looking for. If you, if you do that things, you will see. But once you want to preach something that you like, then you will always and always, never and ever find the truth that I am the true one or the, 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 the sent out one. He was drawing them to what? Because they were using the Torah more. So our Lord Jesus Christ warned them to go to the Torah, what the Torah says. Open your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy 18, 15. Uh, to 19. We will read 18, 15, then we jump to 19. It said, The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him you shall hearken. Verse 19. It shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require if I will require of him. This is what our Lord Jesus Christ want them to know. That in your Torah, the one that you will depend so much that I have cured somebody in the Sabbath day. So because of that, I have contradicted the word of God. Because of that, you want to seek me and kill me. If you go to the Torah, you will see that I am the one that God promised that he will come. Yes, because they are choosing people. They choose the part of the Bible that will benefit them, and they turn their back at the other side that they think it goes against them. As church, every time the word of God comes to us, it's supposed to convict us. Because we are not, I mean, righteous people. Each day and night, we commit sin. So we don't need to always think that, oh, we, we only want the love of God, but we reject the, the judgment of Christ? No. Everything needs to go. But it's supposed to convict, uh, convict us and help us to stop the sin that we are doing and help us to repent from our sin. We need to realize that we are called to handle God's truth. God's truth is confronta uh, confronta uh, confrontational. It does reprove, reprove and rebuke. So anytime the word of God comes to us and it will reprove us and it will rebuke us, we shouldn't think that the person is attacking us. We shouldn't think that, oh, maybe the person have a problem with us. But we need to even delight in the reproof that the person, God has led him to bring it to us. You know, most churches, they don't want to pre preach a certain part of the Bible because they think, oh, if I preach, I will be attacking my members, I will be rebuking them, and I don't want. God's truth is always truth, and we don't need to be choosing the part that will go to us, and that is what the, the Jewish people do. So as church, we need to see that. Our application will be, we must let God wear daily pour over our hearts to teach and to train us to do his will. It is only the will of God that we are living. And it is only his word that will guide us. It is only his word that will direct us. It is only his word that will make us to stand firm. It is only his word that will lead us to heaven. It is only his word that will help us to reject our sinful life. It is only his word that will lead us to look to God, to look to Christ, and not anything else. So we need to have faith. We need to keep our feet on the word of God. Let's give thanks to those who started. Because they didn't went through a certain area. They didn't went through the window. But they went through the, the door. They preached only Christ. And that is why this, this church is still alive. I have seen so many churches that they started with deceive. They started to preach ag about themselves. And today such church is no more. It has collapsed. 
because their truth was not coming from God. And they were preaching about the imagination, gaining from the people. And we need to resist from it. We need to preach the truth. Let the truth, I mean, put people in, in, in God's will. Let the truth put people in, in the right, uh, right choice for them to make, but not us. We must know that Jesus is not a deceiver, nor a good man, but his true God who deserves all the glory. I mean, when we read in, uh, in John chapter, <clears throat> let's go back to our, our message, John chapter 7. John chapter 7. We will see from verse, uh, verse number of 5, 6, 8, 9 coming. We will see there was a division between the people. They were asking themselves, is this man good man? Is this man a deceiver? So the, the people were asking themselves a question. But they didn't realize that our Lord Jesus Christ is not just a good man. They, is this man a deceiver? And others said, oh, maybe he will be a good, good person. Jesus Christ is not a good person. He is true God and true man. He came to this earth to save people. He is God who needs to be given all the accolation, our adoration needs to be given to him. We need to give him the glory. We need to glorify his name. This is who Christ is. And this is who he made us to be, that we need to give glory to God. And let this lead us this year. For we don't serve human beings. We don't serve any other creatures. We serve the one who created us. Let us not compare churches to churches. Like maybe this church, he have a lot of members. And our church, we don't have no. Even if it is five people and we will preach the truth, it matters to, uh, to God. It matters to Christ. More than having a lot of multitude, but preaching something else. So I believe that you will want to do the will of God this year. And let us, let this one help us to do the will of God. Shall we all stand and pray? Our God, Heavenly Father, we do thank you for what we have learned. Please guide us to always stand by your truth and to teach your truth. Please help us to always open our hearts and mind to direct the church in the right way. To serve you as what you want us to serve. For us not to do our mind, for us not to do our will, but to always do the will of you. Help us, Father. In Lord Jesus' name I pray, amen. I think uh, we need to have our uh, offering, uh, so I will call Brother Evan to come and pray for our offering. <clears throat> Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you this time as your children to worship you through our giving. We thank you, Lord, for providing for our needs. And we thank you, Lord, for being there for us, sustaining us throughout this time. Help us, Lord, practice our faith as we give and worship you through this. All these things I pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. May I request everyone to please stand for our closing song. Let us sing again, when the roll is called up yonder. We will sing the last verse. On the first verse, ready, sing. 
Let us labor for our master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work from earth is done, and the Lord is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. God bless you all. You are dismissed.